what advice do you give to the woman who is dating, mm -hmm. but she didn't get a date on Valentine's Day? What wait, advice wait, wait we gotta go back. You said she is dating, but out of her dates, then then she's the side chick, and they have a main chick. If you don't see your man that you're dating on Valentine's Day, I wouldn't talk to them anymore. Men, if we if if I'm dating three different women, and and I'm just giving a scenario, and I have enough money for one really great date, Ooh. that one woman, I'm the other two, they they can, hey, if you understand and you want to hang around, that's cool. But the woman I have my eyes on is the one that's going to get my whole day. This lady came up and she said, women make a big deal about Valentine's Day because any other time, most men aren't romantic on a consistent basis. Ooh, dang, she came with guns blazing. <laughs> what are your thoughts Whoa. on that? Oh, <laughs> wow, that's deep. Um, The first 90 days, nothing physical, not even kissing. You're dating to collect data, you're enjoying, you're enjoying the journey, you're enjoying the dates, but you're really collecting information for discovery to see if this person is your person based off of what you're praying for, character qualities. I mean, you could throw in there. I'm not big on like when, when people have one type looks wise. I mean, as long as they look attractive to you, then that's fine. What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary Terry Mary, wanting you to love fearlessly. I have a special guest with me today, and this episode is so special because we go back. I mean, pre-brand, like when I was doing <laughs> Dr. A Love Show, like half of the Bravehearts yes. community don't even know about Dr. they like, who? So, and that's a long story within itself, but that's how long she's been rocking with me. Let me introduce today's guest. She is an award-winning national best-selling author of the novel, He's Fine, But Is He Safe? I want to talk about that as well. That's going to be good. <laughs> and more Christian fiction novels and relationship books that empower and inspire singles. A Simon & Schuessler public, uh, published author for her novels and self-published author, for her nonfiction book, she currently reaches over 35,000 women in her private Facebook uh, support group, Single, Saved, and Celibate. Love that. And even more than her daily devotionals, YouTube channel, and live events, I'm a subscriber as well. <laughs> a, a former singles guest com columnist for Gospel Today, she has made national appearances on the Word Network and also been featured in Ebony and Essence and Black Enterprise magazines. The list goes on and on. She most recently is the owner of Driven Light Entertainment in which his first production was the stage play version of her uh, Black Expressions best-selling novel, He's Fine, But Is He Safe? That uh, mounted Sweetest Day Weekend 2023 featuring an all-star cast and received rave reviews with over 2,000 in attendance. Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Kim Brooks. Thank you. you. I'm good. How are you, Sean? I am good. I'm so happy we get to connect again after yes. all these years. Yes, yes. You're doing big things. <laughs> Trying to get on your level. I'm almost there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I want to talk because Valentine's Day is coming, right? Yes. And we got our red on. Red is my favorite color. So I'm excited. Yeah, I tried to represent. <laughs> <laughs> I now, Kim, let me lay the groundwork real quick because I want to ask you a question. I was on the IG live the other day and I was talking about Valentine's Day. And I said, anybody want to come up to the stage and let's talk about this? This lady came up and she said, Women make a big deal about Valentine's Day because any other time, most men aren't romantic on a consistent basis. Ooh, dang. She came with guns blazing. What are your thoughts Whoa. on that? <laughs> wow, that's deep. Um, Maybe that's been her experience, you know, 
Um, I'm big on being consistent and romantic and dating regularly, going to different restaurants and different forms. So they're just different kinds of men out here. There are some that are romantic and some that aren't, some that are affectionate, some that aren't. So um, that was interesting, though, that she pointed that out. Um, are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone. on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. I mean, I like the idea of Valentine's Day. I, I do think it's a it's it's more of an intentional holiday, I guess, for that reason. But um, if she has challenges with her man, I would definitely suggest she bring it up to him and be like, um, "Can we do it a little more than just Valentine's? Can you give me some flowers outside of a holiday?" You know, so it sounds like a communication uh, issue. She got to communicate that standard of hers. You know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So how do you feel about that as far as how, you know, how do you feel about a man being romantic and being, you know, romanticizing you? Like, is this something that you, is that something that you look for in a man or is this something that, you know, is kind of like, uh, if he is, he is, if he, like, do you like to be romanticized? Yes, for sure. I am one of those people that love love and big romantic and yeah, so I definitely appreciate all those different efforts and things. And it doesn't have to always be outlandish. I mean, we can go out to nice restaurants, go to the movies, and then some days I remember back in the day, remember summertime drive through. I mean, just walk in the park. I mean, as long as there's thought put into it, um, And you're spending time, you know, one of my love languages is time. So spending time together, um, even if you're just watching a social experiment show like Married at First Sight or something <laughs> and Yeah, talking people about love the it show. and, and communicating, because I'm, I'm big on communication. So if we're communicating about the couples and, you know, then that's good, you know, so. Yeah, for sure. I wanted to ask, how do you feel? Because so much has changed since like the last time we actually interviewed together. Like, it's been Yeah, years. we used, we go way back to when I had my blog talk radio show. I don't even I don't even think they kept my interviews. My interviews at first they were archived. Now I can't even access some bad boys. So, but it was great. We had the panels, and yeah, I enjoyed the interviews. So, yeah, we did. Some people still use it. It's still it's still running. really. Yes, it wow. is. Yes, Okay. in twenty twenty four. I wanted to ask, how do you feel about dating when it comes to? Because some people is like, I don't want a date at our first date at Starbucks. I want this kind. Of, like, how do you feel about that whole dating thing? Some people want these grand first dates. You know. How do you feel about that? It, you know, should a guy be okay with taking a woman to say the first date Starbucks? Is, is that an issue or Well, like, what it's are not your thoughts? a date. It's a meetup. So there's a difference. So he can say, I'll take you on a date to, and you know what? That whole Cheesecake Factory thing, 
I'm mad about that because, you know, that turned out to be a fake skit. And I feel like a lot of these are that way to make, unfortunately, at the expense of us women, make us look bad. But then you have women willing to sign up for it and, and be the actors, actress or whatever. So, yeah, I like to me, I like Cheesecake Factory. I love the ambiance. I love the food selection. I have a friend of mine. A male friend, whenever he comes in town, we always go to, that's like one of my favorite spots because yeah. I just, I like the ambiance, the food, the different cheesecakes. So I don't know. It's sad that we can take one thing, one instance and turn it into a whole narrative as a, as a means of dividing us even further as men and women, especially in our community. It's like, oh, black women don't want to go to Cheesecake Factory. But as far as, now me personally, I've never... I've never had a Starbucks invitation. Like, even if you, because I, I don't know if you know, Sean, but for a year, I was an online dating coach. I had a group. Yep. And it was like 30 women in the group. And from the 30, one met her husband online. Another one, no, two of them are now dating their person for two years. Another young lady got engaged. And that was all within the year of being in the group. So praise God. Um, so I talk about, you know, first date, you want to be able to communicate, collect data, dating to collect data. And if you go on a date, like this one guy, he asked me where I wanted to go. And then some women are like, well, he should take charge and he should plan it out. But I don't look at it that deep. It's like, I look at it like he just wants me to go somewhere that I would want to go. And I just pick somewhere reasonable because I'm a reasonable person. I feel like it's our first date. You don't know me that well. I don't know you. I mean, I have, don't get me wrong. I have had men take me on very nice first dates, but then I've also had ones that, you know, we would go to Olive Garden, which I think is decent, nice ambiance. But yeah. Starbucks, like I'll give another example, COVID. When COVID hit, um, this guy, we couldn't go to a restaurant. Our first date was at a park. And we walked around the park. He was a little older. So this one guy wanted to play him in basketball. So he played a little basketball. And it was nice. Um, found out he was a minister. We both had some things in common. But, and then by like, what was it? The third conversation, he was like, I think you're, I want to marry you. You're the one. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But it was interesting because he was like, you know, as a man, I don't go by emotion. I go by information. So based off the information, you're the one. And I had to tell him, I have to have emotional connection. I can't just go by. And he wasn't understanding that. So it didn't work out. But that was the first date. So I think a lot of times we're focusing too much on the first date, the location, more than the overall goal. Like, what's the purpose of a date? To collect data, information, get to know, you know. And I think what's going on with all this male and female gender wars, whatever you want to call it, we're looking for excuses to not give each other grace and to not think things through and to not look at each each of us as individuals. We're trying to put everybody in a big old category. Oh, she don't like him. Uh, Cheesecake Factory, she one of them. Oh, she don't mind Cheesecake Factory, she, she might be cool. You don't know why. She might have had a bad, she might have dated somebody and it might remind her of her ex-boyfriend and so she never wants to go there again, you know? But unless you ask, you you won't find out. And I just think a lot of people make a lot of assumptions as an easy out, especially people who aren't really ready to get married or be in a serious relationship, like subconsciously, because that was my thing. Consciously, I thought I was ready, but I found out subconsciously I wasn't. So some and so when you subconsciously not ready, you're gonna make up excuses for it to not work. Oh, she wanted them, oh he wanted them, oh he must have got no money, oh he broke, you know. Yeah, yeah. And and that's that's good because I think about this whole gender war like you were talking about, and, and I want to get into the uh Valentine's Day thing, but we 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 we, we wrap it now, so I gotta talk about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. One thing I noticed about this gender war thing is people, when a woman says something about women, when she say, I need, I just like to have a little more help around the house. Mm -hmm. If you can help me with household chores, all of a sudden men get defensive or vice versa and then make it about them. 
what about everything that I do? Or, you know, so no yeah, one I is, noticed that too. Yeah, no one is being heard. Exactly. And that's the point. And a colleague of mine, you, I'm sure you know Tony Gaskins, he made that point in one of his videos. We shared a similar publicist years ago, years ago. And so we had her in common. So we would, you know, just communicate online. He was in person somewhere, but he didn't go to the after event. Which was cool because I know he was protecting himself because, you know, he's sing it was a singles event. So I think I messaged him later and was like, I was there, you know, but um, <laughs> but he had made a, a mention. He said. Whenever he shares a video to women or about something for women, men would say, but what about men? And opposite, if it's a video about men, women would say, what about us? And it's like. You know, don't let's not all lives matter. It if we see a video talking about a specific thing, let's talk about the specific thing. It's almost like a deflection. Yep. So yeah, and and one thing I learned over time, and I even learned this in my own marriage and going through a divorce and things of that nature, yeah. is you don't you have to let God be God. You have to let God fight your battles for you. And I realized I used to be really defensive when things came my way. And mm -hmm. I, I, I thought, I said, you know what? If I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, I don't have to defend myself. Yes, that's good. That's good. So whatever you choose to say is what you choose to say. And those are your feelings on it. And that's okay. Yes. The minute I get defensive, though, now we start this cycle. Yeah. You know, so now nobody's being heard. We get caught into the arguments. We get into the struggle yeah. Olympics, you know. Oh, no. Me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're all we're always in protective mode. And to me, to be honest, it's like a form of survival being from in our community. We're used to. Sprack, you know, getting stuff, doing things for survival that we do it to our relationships. We do it with our money. And it's just always we're fighting for what's ours instead of having that abundance mindset, you know, that collaborative mindset that everyone can have a say. You don't have to fight to be right. Just fight to understand each other. And I always say that, you know, the purpose of communication is to understand each other instead of I'm right, you're right, because that's ego, you know, and a colleague of mine used to say ego means edging God out. When we're yeah. led by ego, but we do it so much and it's it's so um like we just do it a lot. <laughs> yeah. And we yeah. don't even realize it. Um there was something you said I was gonna mention something. I can't remember right now. But yeah. it sounds like you've been doing some some inner work there. Oh yeah, yeah, because you've known me years back. Yeah. So for me to try Going through a divorce, and I don't want to make this about me because no, I'm you're fine. <laughs> I just learned over time that being defensive, that person doesn't feel heard. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, because so, that you're because you're not listening, like you said, you're trying to defend, you're trying to protect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's an insecurity when you have to defend. Yes. You know, when you feel like you got to de de defend yourself, I feel like, and this might, you know, it might not be a popular opinion. I just feel like you should let your your work show for itself. Um, yeah. Even going through my divorce and, and the Brave Arts community, you know, they know my story. Oh, wow. Going through a divorce. One thing that, and, and I learned this, I was like, I don't have to fight that battle. No. And, and no shade to my ex. I would never talk bad about her. Even to this yeah. day, I wish her the best. I'm, you know, I'm I'm not like that. I never will throw her under the bus. Yeah. It just became a, a point where people started to ask me questions. My daughter would ask me questions and stuff. And I would tell my daughter at the time that she was too young to understand what was going on. Yeah. And yeah. It like I, these kids these days, they be wanting to get all in the grown folks business. I was reading about something and it was like the child was talking about, well, I found out my child support is this amount and mama, you should be giving me this amount. I was like, I'm 40 some years old. I still don't know what my mama was getting when I was, when my dad was giving child support. I'm like, yeah. This is weird. Like, this is interesting. Interesting stuff. Like, they yeah. be all in the adult stuff. Uh, That's another topic. 
Yeah, right. Cause yeah, I can talk about that all. Cause my mm -hmm. kids be nosy. I'm like, <laughs> are you gonna be a journalist or you, gonna, you need to be something? Cause I, I the way them ears perk up when I start talking about adult stuff is ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> um, I want to kind of pivot to talk about your books, right? And we'll have your books linked up in the description below. Of all the books you've written, which book do you like the most and why? Hmm. I would say, because I, I write fiction and nonfiction, so I would lean to fiction because I love creative writing. That's my number one passion. The other ones are more ministry-based, which is fine. It blesses people. But I feel like with fiction, you have to be more creative and you have to, I still get my message out, but I do it in a way that's creative and funny. So I like that. And so I would say my latest novel, She That Findeth, which is a spinoff of He That Findeth a Wife. And so the tagline is like, when waiting on the Lord takes too long. <laughs> that I already said that's going to be my movie tagline. So don't nobody take it. But <laughs> but I'm um because, you know, the the He's Fine But It Is Saved was a play and it was filmed. So it's going to be on Tubi soon by, by the spring. And then next, we're filming my next novel. Well, I did the sequel after that, and then we did She That Findeth. Wow. So I look at She That Findeth as the grown and sexy version of He's Fine, But Is He Saved? Because I wrote He's Fine, when I, But Is He Saved when I was, you know, in my 20s and about three women on three different levels spiritually, the baby Christian, the super saved, and the balanced one. But... She That Findeth is more, like, I guess more modern, and the women are, like, one of the young, it's about three friends. One of the young ladies was divorced, so she's having trouble. A, a colleague, attorney colleague is approaching her, so she's kind of shutting them down. Another one is um, Pippa, and she's kind of, like, very naive. She feels like she knows, she knows who her husband is. He's at the church. He just don't know it yet. <laughs> one of those. Yeah. And then, um, the main character, Shanita Love, Shanita Love, get it? Shanita, oh. Shanita Love, Shanita Love. She's been I celibate like 10 years and she's tired of waiting on God. So she decides to take matters in her own hands. So she sets on a journey to find her husband by going where men are, wearing heels to Home Depot, going to the games, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And it's just about her journey and about her friends. Oh, and then there's Danielle. Danielle used to dance on the pole, but then she got saved, but then she started to be the praise team leader, but then a temptation comes where her funds get low. She's like, Lord, just give me 30 days, Jesus, and I go to the club, but I'm going to come right back. I'm going to tithe it and everything. So that's her. She was probably the, I had the most fun writing about her. That's so. cool. <laughs> give, a, give a tenth of the pole money, huh? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I have to specify it was a pole club. She was fully clothed because some people are like that's a club. No, it was she was a pole dancer and they had clothes on. Oh my god, yeah, that's yeah. Because you know, the minute people hear that, it's like, oh, okay, like what? <laughs> yeah, she's at, at what club? What advice do you give to the woman who is dating, mm -hmm. but she didn't get a date? on valentine's day what wait, advice wait, wait we gotta go back you said she is dating but out of her dates then then she's the side chick and they have a main chick if you don't see your man that you're dating on valentine's day i wouldn't talk to them anymore well well here's the thing because i i um i got this well i don't know i'm not gonna say this show yeah, I thought it was interesting because someone asked this question. What's that? Like, as a woman, because, you know, and, and I'm throwing in my air quotes, when women date, they, and men too, right? They have their roster. You have three or four different people you see in that one time, right? But what about when it's Valentine's Day and you weren't selected? Well, of, you know, maybe you came in third place, so maybe you'll get a text. <laughs> my thing is for for this 2024 same energy time 
So if he just wants to send a text, then I'll send a text back. But in my mind, I will make a mental note. Because if it's Valentine's Day, and let's say you have three guys, and I actually, I encourage that now. I don't know if I share that with you, but um, I I encourage women to date multiple people the same way that men do it. A lot of women, such as myself, used to only date one at a time. But when you do that, it'll a whole year go by, you've only dated like two or three people. So at least this way, because you're dating to collect data, and I also have, and I put it on my TikTok, um, the first 90 days, nothing physical, not even kissing. You're dating to collect data, you're enjoying, you're enjoying the journey, you're enjoying the dates, but you're really collecting information for discovery to see if this person is your person based off of what you're praying for character qualities. I mean, you could throw in there. I'm not big on like when, when people have one type looks wise. I mean, as long as they look attractive to you, then that's fine. But you want the majority of things to be character traits. You know, are they kind? Are they driven? Um, do they have emotional intelligence? Are they, this one guy I had to break up with because he wasn't willing to go to counseling or do the work. He was closed off to it. And for me, because I know the situation I grew up in with my parents and what I've seen, I feel like every Black person should go to therapy. I feel like that should be part of our reparations, to be honest. That we should get one to two years of free therapy at least once a month because we all come from trauma. That's right. And we should get free cotton, too, as Chris Rock was saying. <laughs> Everything that's cotton should be free for us <laughs> oh my gosh and my dad that's crazy you say that because my dad's from tennessee he's 86 now and he used to pick cotton with his mom he and his mom used to compete because his mom was very masculine she's very she never told him i love you and that's a whole nother story because he used to tell me all the time on the phone every conversation and he said he tells me because he would he was never told it so but he said they used to pick cotton together so I can see that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, not that far removed, huh? Not, not at all. You know, yeah. he's in Tennessee now. And, my, you know, my mom, she's deceased. She's been gone eight years. But, mm. but yeah, yeah um, I think that's, that should be part of it. So I was just basically saying, like, you want to know the character traits, the character qualities. And, oh, so you're saying, like, if you didn't, if you only got a text. If you only got a text, whereas... He didn't ask you out, no flowers. Then you just have to make a mental note that he's not prioritizing you in that way just yet. Mm -hmm. And so as you have a couple people, two and three people that you're getting to know, the one that takes you out and gets you flowers, he gets bumped up a couple notches. <laughs> he gets some more cool points because this is the time as women, especially because the men are the hunters, and so we're pursued. I'm encouraging women because mainly I minister mainly on uh, self love, a lot on self love and knowing your worth. You have you want to go with someone who, and I want to get your thoughts on this too as a man because I've heard it. Our grandma, grandma said it that the man that kind of makes the effort to show that he's into you. That's who you want to go with instead of all the superficial things. The one that's really showing you that he's showing up for you and there for you. Whereas before we used to just, oh, he fine. Oh, he got swag. Oh, I like him. And, and he's barely calling, but we want to keep calling him because he's a challenge. And I used to be like that. Oh, he ain't giving me no attention. I'm going to call him. But now it's like, you get older, you'd be like, no. Whoever is showing me attention, I will reciprocate the same energy. <laughs> yes, I, I, I feel that because contrary to popular belief, I was single one time <laughs> a while ago. But, you know, I it, it Valentine's Day is almost like you really find out where you belong. And unfortunately, Ooh. it comes around once a year, right? So, so if you got with somebody in in May, you might almost have to wait until February of next year 
<laughs> to see where you really stand because when a man is dating for most, so in the comment section, don't come for me. I'm just uh oh, uh oh. Yeah, I'm just giving real game. Men, if we if if I'm dating three different women and and I'm just giving a scenario, and I have enough money for one really great date, Woo! that one woman, I'm the other two, they they can hey. If you understand and you want to hang around, that's cool. But the woman I have my eyes on is the one that's going to get my whole day. She's going to get my whole day. And, and that varies from man to man because it depends on what he likes in that woman. You know, her looks and stuff like that. That that counts too, right? So depending on what that man wants, he's going to prioritize that, that one woman. And he's going to pursue, like you said, because men are hunters and what we want is what I, I remarried. I remarried. Um, we dated long distance. And we got married six months. Boom. Got married. Here we are going on seven years. Awesome. I so, was just looking at that about how men, it doesn't take men long at all. Most men know by six months if they see you as. But that's the thing, and that's what I share with with women is you have to for the man he if she is his ideal like dream woman, then she's gonna get the pursuit and the treatment and you know the ring and marriage and all that. So yeah. I minister to women to let them know their worth so that they won't depend on their ranking for their self esteem. And I also talk about, like you said, if a, if it's Valentine's Day and you don't get flowers from the guy, you may really, really like him and he's fine and all that, he goes to church and all that, but you don't get a date, you don't get any flowers, you don't get a card, you get a text, you have to, as women, have to make that mental note and make that shift because, oh, the other thing I want to mention when I talk about 90 days, because remember when Steve Harvey talked about the 90 day rule and all that with celibacy? Well, I talk about 90 days of guarding your heart. Mm. So like Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart or keep your heart with all diligence. So that's why I encourage women to not lead with their heart, but to guard their heart so that they don't end up disappointed if something doesn't work out, if you don't end up being his dream woman. So you have to be able to have enough self-love so that you can move on and know that you're worth being that main entree and not just the side dish. I had a guy, I was um recently, what was the, so Christmas. Mm -hmm. Um, That's another telltale is Christmas, especially if they're local. Now it's different if you're long distance, but even if you're long distance, you can do um, Zoom and all that, FaceTime. Mm -hmm. So this particular person, it was Christmas. We talked, it seemed like every day, but, and they were local. We talked for a couple of weeks on the phone, but he never asked me out on a date. He finally did, but he used to joke and be like, well, I'm going to take you to McDonald's. Ha, ha, ha. And he would say that. And I'm like, uh, mm. <laughs> yeah. but he said it a few times. So it's like, OK, what's going on here? And we had a date, but we never had, loca had the location. And we had a date and time. But it came and went. And then somebody died or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So the old me <laughs> would be like, oh, somebody died. I understand. Your cousin. Oh, your cousin. <laughs> but now that I'm more leveled up in self-love and awareness and so it's only a text. It only took a, you could have texted and said, you know, this happened. We're not going to do this. I'm sorry. But that didn't happen. I didn't hear from you. I think it was two days. And then you pop back up. That happened. Sorry. And then you try to communicate again. And I and I sent them. I call it the exit speech. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little script for them. I have a script. I'll be like, you seem like a nice person, but I don't think it's a match. I hope you find what you're looking for. So I'll either text it or I'll say it. Copy and paste. <laughs> 
And that was it. I And I think with him, I think I said I moved on. Because I think it was also, I didn't see him. It was Christmas and Christmas Eve. And so I was just getting the vibe that he had someone else, you know, that he was entertaining, which is fine. But I'm, I'm an entree. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. So you, you have to know. So when I let him know I want to move on, and that was that was it. So he didn't say anything, no text back. That's fine. And it was on a, a dating dating app or whatever. So then a couple was it a couple weeks later, he texts me again, like as if nothing happened. Like hello, I'm like um, and then he goes, well I saw you were on my page or something and I think I was just scrolling you know how you scroll through them I don't know if you've ever been on the apps or whatever but you scroll through and you see your messages so I think I might have not remembered them or something you click on an oh that's that guy you know yeah yeah so I was like so I blocked them <laughs> blocked them there blocked them there so no more communication it you have to know what you want and you have to know who you are you have to be convinced of your own worth and you have to not feel like you have to prove it to somebody else mm -hmm. because with online dating and it's changed over the years. I mean, I have about seven friends that got married like 15 years ago, 10 years old, mm -hmm. 10 years ago, because it was more anything in the beginning is always in its purest form. Yeah. Yeah. So it was really men. A lot of them were looking for marriage. They were on eHarmony and even eHarmony has since been bought out by another company so now that's not even the same mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whereas now i think i read an article and they said guys they'll get online dating and they'll just like just to be liking yeah just like 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 to see who would respond who catch yeah. instead of really yeah vetting that's, that's not like typical guy stuff unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> It does. That's not the thing. I'm 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 catching on. I guess yeah. you can catch on to some of the tricks I was sharing in one group where it's men and women, and I said something like, "I think he just told her what she wanted to hear because it made." And then the guys were like, "Bingo!" They were like basketball shots. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I'm picking up on it. I'm picking up yeah. on it. See that maybe that's why a lot of older men don't. Well, not a lot because some do still date women their age, but is that why some of them? Because it's kind of like. We we know some of the games, and so they rather talk to a younger person that's like a little more green. Maybe because my wife is twelve years younger than me. Okay. So I think with her, I think it was more of like the it was like the excitement. It was like the you can do anything kind of attitude, like let's go conquer the world kind of thing. And this isn't all women or men. When you're a little older, yeah. you, you're kind of a little jaded by life a little bit. You know, some yeah. people some people still got it. They still got yeah. that little twinkle in their eye, you know. Yeah. But when you're younger, you just you're ambitious and you, you're excited about life and you know. Yeah. So um, but to each his own. Uh, it's, it's 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 sad that I mean, I know women older that are ambitious, but I guess everybody has their own thing, like you said. Yeah. And, and I, I want to backtrack real quick when I was making a re the Valentine's Day reference, because I want to say to the women that's listening that just because he didn't choose you or just because you didn't get that time with him doesn't mean that you're worth less. You exactly. Know, I, yeah. I want to you know take that back a little bit because sometimes I, I didn't get that impression from you saying that. Uh, oh, OK. Yeah. You, you, you'll be you surprised. You're keeping it real. Yeah, for sure. You, you'll be surprised in the comment section, Kim. Uh, but, oh, uh oh. Yeah. But, but for the most. You were keeping it real. And then I was, because my I feel like I'm called to the ones who may have in the past been looked over. Mm -hmm. And to know their worth isn't based on how another person treats them, but they know how who they are and how they should be treated. And they believe God and they wait for the one that will treat them that way. That's true. If there yeah. is someone that will, unfortunately. I mean, you you have so many heartbreaks and heartaches and you're like, are they all like this? Yeah. You just have to keep keep faith, you know, and be willing to explore your options. I'm all for that, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, 
go where you're celebrated and not just tolerated. Yep. Yep. I agree. Because when I was dating my wife, I was also talking to another lady. You know, we were, we all like long distance. Right. And I remember the, the girl that I was talking to, uh, she was a little older and what separated her from my wife was this. And, and I always tell people this. I told the first girl I was talking to, I said, hey, how do you feel about us having Bible study together? Because um, we were on Skype. This is how long ago this was. <laughs> so she was like, yes. uh, yeah, Skype, right? She's like, yeah, that's cool. Okay, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, okay, we'll read, you know, Ephesians, whatever. And then we'll kind of double back and, and talk about it. She's like, okay, yeah, that's cool. Uh, did the same thing it, with my wife. And it was one of those things where my wife was like, I'm down. Like, let's do it. But over time, I realized that girl A, she was honest enough to tell me, she was like, I love God, but I ain't into God like that. Like, I love God. But... And I appreciate that honesty because that yeah. let me know. I was like, I need to be with somebody who loves God more than they love me because I, I would disappoint yes, you. Yes, that's good. Yeah. So it just depends on what works for you. You have to know what works for you because there's a there's plenty of attractive people out here. But yeah, just because you know men, it's like, do you know your man? Do you know your woman? And you know do and also do you know? I mean, we know that God shows us what we need, but then as you get older, you find out, and as you have different relationships, you find out what you want and what you don't want, the qualities you're looking for the qualities you won't tolerate, the qualities you can work with. And and that's the other beauty behind dating more than one because that's a way to guard your heart as well. Because if you just had one person and that one person was like, well, um, we can do Bible study, I guess, if I'm available. And then you'd be like, okay. And then you try to work with her and make excuses for her and, you know, tell God, well, at least she said she might be open. But if you got three people and then the other person is excited about the Lord, then that's something that you value. So now you can kind of narrow it down. And I think for so long, it's been more acceptable for men to do that and be that yeah. way as far as multiple. But for women, it's like, but see, I know the reason why is because the assumption is that women are sleeping with all these men. Yeah. And you don't have to sleep with all the men just to get to know them, especially if we're talking first 90 days. Yeah. I mean, you're not sleeping with them. You're you're dating them. And then that's a way to find out if they are looking for what you're looking for. Yeah. Because the ones that just want to, you know, get what you quit, hit it, quit or whatever, they're going to grow impatient. You know, 90 days or you don't, of course, you don't tell them. Yeah, yeah. Collect the data, you date, you go out, you, you know, and also there's a statistic that shows anyone that has a personality disorder, like narcissism or borderline personality disorder, that it comes out within six to eight weeks. So that's another reason I say 90 days. Because yeah. when you have people that get married after a month because they got love bomb and next thing you know, it's like hell on earth. They gave in to the love bombing season and they didn't wait for that to wear off. So, yeah, that's why I'm like, okay, date multiple people, get to know multiple people. And at least 90 days before you decide to be exclusive. Yeah. So I want to ask you this real quick since you're talking about it. Mm -hmm. dating multiple people i get it but then i'm kind of on a fence with both ways right mm -hmm. i'm kind of in between because i get with the one person it's like uh oh, you try to invest in this one person and it's just like ah uh, and now it doesn't work and you're just like back at square one kind of thing yeah with multiple people though could you and for lack of a better term could you like wear yourself thin like do you really get to know three different kind of people or like just to try to balance out like three different people and how do you have the time to well i mean you just getting to know them mm -hmm. one person could be out of state 
So you talking to them maybe at night or different days, and then another person, you, you're communicating, you're going out, you're collecting data, and eventually one will win out, I guess. I remember, I, I'll give an example. I was dating, it was two. It wasn't three. And the one person, something happened. It was something got mixed up, something... So we didn't go out. We were supposed to go out. Then the other guy, we did go out. So I would go out with the other guy more. So it's like, like you said, the one that's really pursuing you, you know, because you just have to realize men and women, because I know that's another thing. People, who's the prize? And I'm the prize. He's the prize. She's the prize. I mean, just both, you value yourself and you know what you're looking for. So... Let's let's jump into this bonus round, Kim. This is <laughs> this, this bonus round, Kim. There's no wrong answers. This is just Kim Uncut. This is oh, I love Kim Uncut. That's why I'm <laughs> shoot. Okay, let, let, let's go. What is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? The biggest mistake. Or one of them that's kind of like that. Hmm? Or one of them that you might think is like kind of detrimental. Like I, be. I would say, um, a lot of times as women, we are very assumptive. We overthink and we add stories to surface stuff. And I think we both do it, men and women. But I just, you know, because I mainly minister to women, we draw conclusions from surface stuff and we and it's not based on any real fact so i'll give an example when i did the online dating coaching there was a so i did i did one-on-ones and then i showed them how to use a profile da, 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 da. so one young lady and it happens a lot of time i don't want to generalize but <laughs> women over 50 have the expectations are kind of like um like this one young lady she went through and she saw a young man that really, he liked her, that he was Christian man. They were talking about Christian things. She's very into the Lord. And she was like, I don't like his hat. His hat looks horrible. And for that reason, she was saying she didn't like him. Could his hat come off? Exactly. <laughs> So I'm like, that's, you can, I mean, little things like clothing. As a woman, we're influential. So if you get with him, you can help pick out his clothes. You know, so stuff like that where it's like, no, that's not, or or just being, assuming things like, you know, bec because he, you don't know the full situation. And like I said in the beginning, we like to look for easy outs and, and don't share it online. Yeah. If you share it online, you'll get all kind of people telling you, girl, no, he ain't got, that ain't the one. Rah, rah. And they don't know the whole story. They don't even know half the story. But unfortunately, like to say, misery loves company. So if you have a, a dating, if you want a, a relationship type question, answer, I tell people, ask, your happily married friend, if you're dating someone and y'all having an issue, ask your happily married friend that's been married five years or longer because they're the ones who truly want you to win. And they generally see both sides or they at least listen to both sides. Whereas your single girlfriend, they'll be like, you know, they only, they're team you, they're team her friend. So they're only going to, I mean, they, they say um, they're looking out for her, but they don't look at the big picture. It's funny you say that because my wife and I just talked about that the other day about talking to happily married husbands and wives because you get that equal balance. Yeah. You know, and then you can even see them maybe hammer out a, a question that was asked to them. She might see it different than uh, the husband sees it different. And then they kind of go back and forth not like argumentative but just like kind of really trying to get this result to you yeah you know of yeah. course they're just being one person 
or even if you see a counselor, you know, have it be someone that's happily married to kind of guide you on that, on your marriage. Because they truly, not only they, do they truly want you to win, they know what it takes and they can validate what you're going through, letting you know this is just a little bump. Whereas singles, they'll be like, oh, no, nah, he did that, girl. Yeah. He yeah. ain't, girl, you going to have to leave him. Mm -hmm. girl. And it could have just been a heat of the moment, just blurted something out. Yep. I was telling a friend of mine the other day, uh, a male friend of mine, my homeboy, I told him, I said, emotions and feelings, they're temporal. Don't, you know, don't make a, a temporary decision that has long term implications. You know, you just yeah. went off because you was mad. I'm like, feelings are fleeting. They come and they go. Yeah. And people invest so much stock and energy in, in the way they feel at the current moment. Because even yeah. the way you felt 15 minutes ago when we were talking, you, you might not even feel the same, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, it, you know, so putting all the stock. Uh, there was one quote yeah. that said, "Emotions make wonderful, wonderful servants, but terrible masters." Mm. Unless you're putting it towards good, because yeah. I'm I'm big on emotions. Like I believe in the power of believing and seeing and saying and feeling and receiving. Um, but when it's that those negative emotions, those low vibrational. Mm -hmm. Oh, feel with hurt and pain and yeah that's when it's it could be dangerous because yeah. when you're thinking about it, i shared this with someone like when you think of love and i've i've heard and i want to hear your take too like to me love is the strongest form of emotional connection if we're talking about it as a feeling because i've heard people say well love is action and love is consistency no those are the behaviors that accompany someone saying that they're in love. But it is, like you say, it's fleeting. And unfortunately, it can be conditional. It's not always unconditional. It's true. Uh, yeah, and that's so, an episode within itself. <laughs> <laughs> because of love, I do X, Y, Z. Because of my love for you, I, I'm consistent. Because of my love for you. Yeah, and but. so that's why for me, again, it has to be a strong emotional connection. I'm, I can't fake it because I, I tell the ladies, whoever you marry, it has to be someone because men, you can let me know if I'm wrong, but men, they look at love, they spell it R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Whereas women, we go by how we're treated, how we feel, what we hear, what he says, but the challenge that I, you know, share with women as well is whatever, whoever your man is, find out what respect means to your man. A lot of times we think it's a broad brush and it's not. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I want to respect, respect your time. I have some. I have some other questions. <laughs> oh, wait, the uncut. I'm sorry. I was, cut, I was cutting into the uncut. No, no it's all good. Uh, who makes a better spouse? Let's just, who makes, in, in your opinion, who makes a better spouse? Someone who never married or someone divorced? I wouldn't, I wouldn't judge either. And that's the, and I'm glad you brought this up because. I think we judge that too harsh. I think the more important thing is where are they now? If you're divorced, what did you learn from it? And who are you now because of it? If you never marry, where are you now? Are you ready to get married? Or have you learned from the relationships that didn't work out? Um, I think that's the more, because like you mentioned, we're, we're, we should be evolving all the time, growing as we learn through experience, things like that. Um, it's interesting you say that because, so my sister, she, she's been married a couple of times and I actually introduced her to her now husband. I met him at CVS. He was a customer there and we just got to chatting and it was father's day. I was looking for a card. And as he shared, I was like, you sound like you'd be perfect for my sister. 
So I introduced them. I showed her a picture. And he's like, oh, she's cute. They went out, been together ever since. But he's also been married before a couple of times. And they had so much in common. That's why I was like, oh, my gosh. So for her, I knew that she preferred to date someone that's been married before because she feels like someone that's been married before is more marriage minded and they kind of know what it takes to be in a marriage type of deal. Whereas I have another friend that she met someone online. She was in her early forties and he was 50. He had never been married, no kids. They, they're happily married going on, I think six years now. He's a pastor and an executive. She's an executive and a co-pastor. And they're in Huntsville. Wow. So it's kind of like you really have to know the heart of the person and where they are now. Mm -hmm. I remember this one guy I dated and he got on my nerves because he kept asking me, well, what's wrong with you? You never been married. Like, what's wrong? And I'm like, if you ask me one more time, <laughs> I mean. I could give you the whole therapy spiel of why my subconscious didn't want to get married because I was afraid of what I saw growing up. I mean, I could do all that. But at the end of the day, I'm here. I'm here now. Do you want to get to know me or do you want to give in to your doubt and your wanting to have an easy out? Because he had been married for like 18 years and he felt like he was the main one given in the relationship. He wasn't appreciated and, you know, he raised the kids alone. I mean, he really felt... And I think he had a fear that either I wasn't who I was portraying myself as, or he was just afraid of possibly going through that again. And so he couldn't, he just couldn't really, you know, he kept bringing it up. And I was like, what is going on? Yeah. So. Yeah. See, yeah. And, and I asked that question because it's, it's kind of a fun question, but it's stuff like that that what you just talked about. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we all have our own story. You know, everyone has a story. So, yeah. yeah. But I, I don't I don't think there's one that's going to make a better spouse. I do. They just both have to be teachable where they are now, blah, 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 you know. That's good. I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Kim, this has been a phenomenal episode. How time flies when you're having fun. Is it already? Oh my gosh, it's been an hour? Yeah, so wow. um, I, I'm going to have to bring you back, okay? So okay. I'm going to have, we, we have to do a part two because I have so much more that I need to talk to you about because okay. this is going to require a part two. Maybe we could do something else for uh, another holiday. I don't know. We'll talk about it. But Kim, okay, let, okay. I just I just wanted to get you get that uh, verbal affirmation so that way, the, you know, the listeners can keep you accountable. <laughs> Not being on affirmations too. That's another thing. You gotta okay. say that I am's in the mirror. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. So I'm big on that too. So awesome. Amen to that. Well, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Can where they can get your books, so, what you got coming up, all the good stuff. Yes. So definitely, if you like to read and you like fiction and nonfiction, my novels are on Amazon. So go Kim Brooks author. There are 50 million Kim Brooks, so you may have to put Kim Brooks Detroit author. Um, sign up for my emails on kimontheweb.com because I got a lot of good things coming up. I got something coming up for Valentine's Day. I haven't even announced it yet. I have a couple things coming up for that. So go to kimontheweb.com, sign up for my emails. That way you'll be notified. One is going to happen during uh, Valentine's weekend. And it's going to, I don't want to say too much, but it's going to involve yeah, sure. meeting other people, meeting the opposite sex. And the other thing, I may do a special um, Zoom because I have YouTube. My handle is Kim on the web. So at Kim on the web for all my socials, except for my TikTok is at Hey Kim Brooks, H-E-Y-K-I-M-B-R-O-K-S. And I kind of get a little deeper in my TikTok. Like the way we're talking, I kind of share. <laughs> on my for so, sure. Yeah, well, I will have everything linked up in the description. So all they got to do is click those links and make sure that they support everything that uh, you're doing. I want to acknowledge you for continuing to do what you do for the Christian community, for for women, for men, your wisdom. Thank I just want to acknowledge you for the the, the books, uh, the plays, just like Praise all the you. blessings that God has uh, put upon you. And for you to just stay consistent, because consistency is something that a lot of people don't 
do anymore, you know? <laughs> it's like fly by night thing, and I've yeah. been seeing you through consistent throughout the years. So oh, I just wanted man. to acknowledge you for those things. I appreciate it. When you when you feel like it's your purpose and why you were born, you gotta just do what God said. So I'm thankful for the people that are blessed and that share me their testimonies and things like that. So thank you. And mm -hmm. I wish you the best as well, Sean. Thank you. Yeah, this was a really an amazing episode. It's Brave Hearts community. You heard it here. Make sure you go connect with Kim. If you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Share this video with someone because you just never know because Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Someone yes. might need this video. If you are listening via podcast, make sure that you leave a rating and review. We'd love to hear what you have to say about the show. Love it. Give us your honest opinion. It's all good. We've grown. <laughs> this is Sean Miami <laughs> with special guest Kim Brooks, and we are out. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.